Hello everybody and welcome to another React tutorial for beginners. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can actually filter our data. So in previous videos, we've set all this stuff up, we've done the styling, but our search bar doesn't work, right? When we actually search for something, it doesn't do anything. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can make that work. So filter the different items that we have in our data. This will be a shorter video, but that's all we need to do. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We can see here that we already have our filters, right? We've set this up already such that when you press the search button, it passes the filters back to app.js. So kind of the hard part there is actually done. All we need to do here is use these filters to actually filter our data. So we have two options here. We could, and ignore this, I was uh, working on this previously, ignore that function call, pretend you didn't see that. So we have two options here is where I was saying, we could filter the data inside of items display. So we could pass the items to items display. We could also pass the filters. And then inside of here, we could do the filter. That makes sense. We could do that. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But I would prefer to not have to pass the filters to this component and to instead filter the data inside of this app component and only pass the data that I want to be displayed to the item display component. So two different options here. Again, you can use whatever you want, but I kind of prefer to not have a ton of props being passed around because it gets kind of confusing and instead use the prompt where I have it. Right. So in this case, I have filters, sorry, which is a state. And so what I can do is just use it to filter the data and then I can pass my filter data as items. So rather than passing all of the items, and then filtering it, I'm just passing the items I actually want to display. Again, you can make arguments for which one is better or worse. But for now, we're going to do this. So I'm going to make a function here. I'm going to say const. And you already guess what this is. It's going to be filter data like that. This will be equal to an arrow function. This will take in some data. And what this is going to return will be an array with all of my filtered data. So all of the items that I actually want to display. So I'm going to start by saying const and I'll say filtered data like that is equal to and this will just be an array. So what we'll actually return here will be our filtered data. But now we need to fill this array with that data. So what I'll do here is I'll loop through all of the items in my data, and then I will check if these items match the criteria in my filters. So let's look at filters. If we go to search bar, we can see we have name, price, type, and brand. That's what our filters are going to be. But some of these filters could be their default value. They could be an empty string. It could be zero, for example. And so before I actually apply this filter, I want to make sure it's not its default value because I don't want to filter uh, based on, say, an empty string because that was just the default value. The user didn't actually type something in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go here, filter data, I'm going to start by looping through all my items. So I'm going to say four and I'll say const uh, and this will be item of data. Now, just so we're clear on what data will be, data will just be a list. So what we'll actually do here is we'll call filter data, as you saw I did previously, and we will pass a list of the items we want to filter. So we'll pass data and the key items because we're holding a, uh, what is it, an actual object here. It has the key items and the key items has an array. Okay, so we pass the array to filter data and then we're going to loop through it. So go through all of the items. Now we're going to check if the uh, field in our filter is actually not the default value. And if it's not, we'll kind of apply that filter. So we're going to say if, and this will be filters dot name does not equal an empty string. So filters dot name does not equal an empty string. We want to apply that filter. So then inside of here, we'll have another if statement and we'll say if item dot name does not equal, and this will be filters dot name. Then what we can do is we can simply continue. We don't actually need all of these uh, curly braces, but I'll just leave them in, in here for now because I think it makes sense. I'm trying to see if there's a way that we can actually combine these together. I think I can do something like this. So I'm going to say if filters.name does not equal empty string and item.name does not equal filters.name, continue. Okay, so that's good. That's the expression that we want here. So the reason for this is we need to first check to make sure it's not an empty string. If it's not an empty string, and the name of our item does not equal the filter that we have, then we're going to continue, which means we're not going to add this item into our filtered data. And so we're kind of skipping it in that sense. OK, so let's copy this. And now we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to check price. So it'll be a little bit different. We'll say filters dot price does not equal equal zero and item dot price. And remember, this is the maximum price. If item dot price is we'll say greater than and then this will be filters.price, then the same thing we want to continue because we're above the maximum price. We don't want to add this item in. Okay, so same thing now, except 
instead of name, we're going to have type. OK, so now we'll just change these to be type and this will all work because type is just going to be a string. OK, and then lastly, uh, we had name, price, type and brand. So let's make this brand. OK, brand and brand. And by the way, continue will just automatically move us back to the next item. So we'll just skip this item essentially when we hit continue. So we'll go to the next iteration of the for loop. And then at the very bottom here, we will say filter data dot push and we will push on this item if, of course, it made it to this stage. All right, so let's quickly recap what we're doing here. We're just going to check all of the filters. The first thing we're checking for all of these filters is to make sure they're not equal to their default value. If they're not equal to their default value, then we'll actually check if this filter applies to the object that we are on. And if it does not, then that means we'll continue. We'll skip this item because only if we get down here to the very bottom, do we actually push this item into the filter data. So it has to pass all four of these checks before it gets in. If any one of these checks does not come up true, or I guess in this case does come up true because we're doing it in kind of the opposite. That means we won't add this item into the filter data. OK, so that should theoretically work. And that's really all we actually need to do to get this to work. So let me just see if my website is running. I believe it is. OK, let me refresh here. Let's add an item and let's see if we can filter it. So we'll say name Tim price 499 type person brand. Great. OK, so add it in, add item. And for some reason, it didn't show up. OK, so I think we're going to have we're having a problem sorry, here uh, with our filter data function, because that's the only thing that could make this not work. So let me have a quick look here and see what's going wrong, and then I'll be right back. All right, so we will continue in one second. We need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering interviews. They have Algo Expert, the product that I've been talking about this whole time. They also have Systems Expert to help you prepare for your systems design interviews. And now they have Machine Learning Expert. Check them out from the link in the description and use the discount code Tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. All right, so I was just doing some debugging here. You can see I was just printing out what the filters are and I have found the error. So let me refresh and show you actually how I uh, came about finding this error because I think this is useful. So if you can look here in the console, uh, when I press, let's say add item here, you can see that we're calling this filters function, right? And so we're going to console.log the filters. Now that's what's being printed right here. This is the filters. Notice how this is an empty object. Now, the reason this is an empty object is because I haven't pressed search yet. When I press search, notice this changes now. It says name, brand, and then it shows this kind of empty object, right, that I had. So the reason why we were getting this error where it wasn't showing us that item is because by default, the state here is holding just an empty object that has no keys. And so when I go inside of here, filters.name is not equal to an empty string. It's undefined. An undefined is not equal to an empty string. And so we immediately skipped our item. Hopefully that's clear. But since we didn't have any filters, this just broke. It didn't work the way that we wanted it to. And so what we'll do inside of here for filter data is we'll just have one line here. And we'll say if filters is equal to an object like that, then what we can do is we can just return our data again, because if we don't have any filters, there's nothing that we need to filter. So now if I go here and again, sorry, so you can see that I don't want to go too quickly for you guys. And I just refresh this. Let's add an item. So let's say name. 299 person test. OK, add item. And of course, it's not showing up. Mm, OK, that's interesting. OK, so it turns out that this line actually doesn't work. I'm assuming that you simply cannot compare an empty object to another empty object and get true in JavaScript. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that this comparison is just invalid. This just doesn't work. We can't do that. And so instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check if we have the name property in our uh, filters. So if we do not have the name property in our filters, that means that we haven't yet filtered anything because we will always get a name that's going to be one of our filters. We'll always have one of those. And so in that case, we can just return data. So let's do that and let's see if this works. Now I'm going to go here. OK, and now this is working. It's actually showing the correct items. So let me just refresh this and let's restart. So let's add an, uh, an item, Tim 299 type person brand test. OK, so let's add item. And now this is working. It's showing up. And now let's try to filter it. So let's make the name Tim and let's search. And OK, that works. But if we change the type to say not a person and now we search, notice it goes away. Right. But if I remove this and now I press search, it shows up again because now this reaches the filter. But if I change this to 399, uh, this is still working. Hmm. OK, 
Ma oh, it's because max price is above <laughs> what it should be. Uh, okay, let's make this lower. So let's make this to 90 and search, and then it goes away. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so the filtering is now working. Now let's add another item in here. We'll just make this one Tim again. Price will be $5.99. Uh, type person brand test. Add item. Okay, now we'll press this to filter. Okay, so max price 290, of course, is not showing up. Now, if we go $3 and search, we get this item. But what if we go to $5.99? Search, okay, it is showing up. Now, let's filter by the brand test. Okay, still showing up. And there you go. Everything is indeed working. All right, so the filters are working. Again, let's just have a look at this function. This is really the meat of what we've done here. We said filter data. We're taking in some data. We're defining our empty list. This is what we'll return with our filter data. We're checking if we've called this uh, or if we set our filters already. If we've not set our filters and it's equal to an empty object like this, so we do not have this name key, that means we can just return the same data. There's no filtering that we need to do. Otherwise, we get a loop through all of our data here, and then we're going to check all of the following things, right? And I've already walked through this, so I won't walk through it again. Okay, so that is really all we need to do to get the filtering working. Hopefully that was helpful. There is a way to do this using the dot filter command uh, or uh, I guess syntax method function, whatever you want to call it. But I think it's always helpful to write out manually just so you understand exactly how you would do this if you weren't allowed to use something like dot filter. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.